Take a few seconds and identify this welding process. This welding process is referred to as flux core arc welding. The American Welding Society has developed a system for identification for flux core arc welding electrodes. With this identification system, it can be determined whether or not a certain classification of electrode requires an auxiliary shielding gas. This is important to the welding inspector since flux core arc welding can be performed with or without an external shielding gas. To identify this type of electrode, the E stands for electrode, the 7 stands for the tensile strength, which is 70,000 pounds per square inch, that's the minimum tensile strength, and the next number, which is the 1, is the welding position, lets you know you can weld in all positions, and the T is tubular, which lets you know that this is a flux core wire. And the last number, which is the six, which is a chemical composition, also the operating characteristics. Some electrodes are formulated to be used without any additional shielding gas other than that contained within the tubular electrode. They are designated by the suffix three, four, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 13, and 14. However, those electrodes having suffixes 1, 2, 5, 9, or 12 require some type of external shielding gas to aid in protecting the molten metal. Take a few minutes and identify this welding process. This welding process is referred to as gas tungsten arc welding, also known as TIG or Heli arc. The American Weld Society has developed a system for identifying the gas tungsten arc welding, which is the same electrode that is used for MIG welding. The ER stands for electrode rod. The 70s stands for tensile strength, which is the minimum tensile strength, 70,000 pounds per square inch. And the S lets you know that that's a solid wire. And the 6 is the chemical composition. This rod typically have increased amounts of deox deoxidizers, such as magnesium, silicon, and aluminum to help avoid the formation of porosity. Trying to weld without these deoxidizers would cause porosity. When TIG welding, filler metal must be added externally, usually manually or with the use of some mechanical wire feed system. All of the arc and metal shielding is achieved through the use of gas, usually an inert gas such as argon or helium, but other non-inert gases can be used such as CO2 or oxygen, which flows out of the nozzle surrounding the tungsten electrode. The deposited well bead has no slag required removal because no flux is being used. As with other welding processes, there is a system to identify various types of tungsten electrodes, which is a non-consumable electrode, which can easily be identified. For example, EWTH-2. The E stands for electrode. The W is the atomic symbol for tungsten. The TH is thorium. And the 2 is 2% 2 thorium, which is red. The presence of thorium and zirconium adds to the improving of the electrical characteristics by making the tungsten slightly more emissive. It is easier to ignite an arc with the thorium and zirconium types than it is the case with pure tungsten electrodes. Pure tungsten electrodes, which is green, is quite often used for welding aluminum because of its ability to form a ball when heated. TIG welding produces wells of high quality and excellent visual appearance. No flux is used, the process is clean, and there is no slag removal after welding. Extremely thin sections can be welded down to five thousandths of an inch. Due to the nature of its operation, it is suitable for welding most metals, many of which are not easily welded using other welding processes. If joint design permits, these materials can be welded without the use of additional filler metal, known as autogenous wells. 
In the case where there is no commercial available wire for a particular metal alloy, it is possible to produce a suitable well metal by simply shearing a piece of identical base metal to produce a narrow piece which can be hand fed as if it was a piece of welding wire. Contrasting these advantages are several disadvantages. First, TIG is among the slowest welding processes. It produces a clean well deposit and has a low tolerance for contamination. Therefore, base metal must be extremely clean prior to welding. TIG, when used as the manual process, requires a high skill level where the welder must coordinate the art with one hand while feeding the filler metal with the other. TIG is normally selected in situations where the need for very high quality wants additional costs to overcome these limitations. Problems associated with TIG is its inability to tolerate contamination. If contamination or moisture is encountered, whether from the base metal, filler metal, or shielding gas, the result can lead to porosity in the deposited well. When porosity is seen, checks should be made to determine the source of contamination so that it can be eliminated. Another problem with TIG is tungsten inclusion. This discontinuity occurs when pieces of tungsten electrode become deposited in the well, which will show up in the x-ray as white spots. Tungsten inclusion can occur due to a number of reasons, and several are listed below. Contact of tungsten electrode tip to the molten metal. Exceeding the current, the amps limit for a given electrode diameter or type. Exceeding the tungsten electrode beyond the normal distance from the collet, result, resulting in overheating the tungsten. Loose collet, which creates more heat on the tungsten from due to resistance. Not enough shielding gas flow rates or excessive wind drafts, resulting in oxidation of the tungsten. Splits or cracks in the tungsten electrode. Improper shielding gas. Improper grinding of the tungsten electrode. And there are also other things that can cause problems.